Hey, hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to, I guess we'll call this the year-end episode of the Ice Talks, where we implement change every day. Now, granted, I know I haven't been talking to you a lot this year, but this has been a very, very busy year, and I apologize for perhaps maybe not making enough time to be more consistent with you. I'm human, I have responsibilities just like you, so please forgive me, please, please forgive me. Hey, let's get to seriousness, let's get to business right now, okay? Enough of the happy theme music because, quite frankly, I'm going to end the year on a high note, but today, today is not a high note day for me, it's uh, Monday, December 19th, and uh, I'll get into why today is not a, a, a high a high note day. I'm going to end the day, and I'm going to end the year on a high note, as are all of you listening. But let me explain what today's episode is about. I had to cut the happy music because this isn't really going to be a happy, happy episode, but it will be a meaningful episode. This episode is primarily, well, it's geared to everyone. It's geared to everyone. As as always, all my all my episodes, all my po- all my podcast is geared for everyone. But today's episode is particularly geared towards the men. Fellas, this is for you in particular. If you're in a relationship, now, now this this is for everybody. This part is for everybody. If you are in a relationship with someone, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, husband, wife, common law partner, uh, whatever. If you are in this relationship and the other person is putting hands on you, you need to get out of that relationship. Now, before you hit me with the easiest said than done... Don't hit me with the easiest said than done. One, I don't play that. I don't play that. I don't accept easier said than done. Because the majority, as a matter of fact, 10 out of 10 people who say something is easier said than done will only say whatever it is they're talking about and do nothing. People who say things are easier said than done tend to give themselves permission to do nothing. So don't hit me with the, it's easier said than done. I know that. But to counter that, I say this. Nowhere in the history of dictionaries being written will you find within the definition of the word hard and or difficult, you will not find the word impossible in the definition for those two words. You will never find anything anywhere that legitimately equates the word hard or difficult with impossible. So I don't want to hear it's easier said than done. Yes, it's going to be hard, but you are going to have to swallow that mess and do it anyway. So again, if someone is that you're in a relationship with is putting hands on you, you need to get up out of there. Yes, you can get your kids, snatch your kids up. If you got to do it in the middle of the night while the person is at uh, at work or asleep, whatever opportunity you get to get up out of there, get up out of there. Find someone somewhere who can help you. And I'm not saying just immediately as soon as they hit you, walk out the door. No, you. I mean, you could, by all means. No, I am saying that. If you can, by all means, somebody put their hands on you, get out. S- smack dab right there. Get out. But if you got to take some time and you got to plot and plan and you got to plan your work and work your plan, then by all means, plan your work and work your plan and get yourself up out of there. Now, that's the message for everybody. All right. That's the generic goals for everybody kind of message. But this episode, as I said before, is geared towards the fellas. Fellas, if you're in a relationship in which your woman is is unaffectionately putting hands on you, you need to swallow your effing pride and report it. You need to go to, yes, you need to go to the police 
and you need to put that on paper. Now, that's going to put your family in some hardship. But I'll share with you briefly what I experienced this morning. Again, Monday, December 19th, 2022, 2022. This morning I was in court for my best friend's sentencing. All right. My best friend was found guilty of murdering his wife and attempting to murder the man she was sleeping with in his house. Now, I'm not passing judgment on him. That's already been done. I'm not passing judgment on her. Unfortunately, that's already been dealt with. Okay. But what I've come to learn through things that weren't introduced in court, things that he told me personally that I'm not going to get too deep into, but because he said it in open court, at least what I'm going to share with you, he did say in open court. So it is a matter of public record of sorts. Um, She put hands on him over the years, right? And over the years, again, and he and and he 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 was a cop as well, right? So, New Jersey is one of the harshest states when it comes to punishing and dealing with domestic violence situations. Okay, so and it's even harder for cops who get caught up. In that nonsense. So he he knew better than to put hands on her. He knew better than to put hands on her. But see, what happened was he reached his 212 point. And now you're sitting in the well, he reached what? 212? What the hell is a 212 point? Well, the 212 point is the name I give for when people allow things to get all bottled up. And, and and they don't have a, a, a legitimate or a decent or a good or a, a constructive or productive means of releasing their stress. So they hold it in and it builds up and it builds up. And why the number 212? Because 212 degrees is the temperature at which water begins to boil. So when you set down a teapot, You fill up a teapot and put the gas on under it. 209 degrees, you got hot water. 210 degrees, 211 degrees, you have hot water. But the second that that temperature hits 212 degrees, the water is boiling and your teapot is whistling. Psychologically, when you hit that 212 point, When with that 212 degrees of emotional frustration finally starts to boil and come out. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't you don't know what you don't know. And unfortunately for my best friend and his family. His 212 point happened when he walked into his house and found another man in his bed. And it's sad. It's tragic. He handled that situation in the worst possible way you could think of. But this is not about him so much as it is about you. I want you to learn. You got to if you if you need somebody to talk to, talk to him, find somebody. If you need a coach, if you need a counselor, if you need a psychiatrist, if you need a therapist, if you just need a good friend who will just shut up and let you vent. It's funny, uh, one of the people I follow on on social media, uh, her name is uh, Danielle Sylvester, and I believe she's in Maryland, and she does TikTok videos with her daughter, and one of the videos she does with her daughter, uh, she explains, you know, um, that when her when her daughter needs to vent and but just wants to doesn't need doesn't need the feedback. But just has things on her spirit, in her in her system that she has to get out, that she has to just, you know, release. One, she knows that she can go to her mom and what she and her mom, she'll tell her mom straight out, mom, I need to talk. I don't need to hear anything back, but I just need to get this off my chest. I need to get this out so I can feel better. So she and her mom will sit down and moms will put, Danielle will put up 
a pillow. She's, they're sitting right next to each other. And she puts up a pillow. So her daughter can't see whatever facial reaction she might be having. Whatever her mother might be having. And, and Danielle, the mother, knows because this is what the conversation is about. It's not even a conversation. That's the whole thing. She knows that this is not a conversation. And she sits there and she just lets her daughter get it out. And I suppose, you know, TikTok video is only a couple minutes long, if that, or, you know, but I suppose when she's done venting, if she wants to talk, you know, and, and, and get feedback, she may, she may ask for it. I don't know. But the important thing is that that young lady has a space where in which she can go and, and a person to whom she can go to, to purge emotionally if she has to. And the reality is we all need that person. I need that person. You need that person. We all should have that person. Okay. Because when you keep it bottled up, every, every negative emotion is just another degree of heat to your spirit. And when your spirit hits that 212 point, and you start to boil over, who knows? Who knows what you may say? Who knows what you may do? You may, whatever you say, you can't say sorry to take it back. Negative words are like bullets. Once you squeeze the trigger and that bullet goes out, you can't pull that bullet back. Once you say something hurtful to someone, you can't take that back. You can't even say you didn't mean it because in the moment that you said it, you meant it. In the moment that you said it, you felt it. So you need to get help. You need to get somebody to talk to. But again, fellas, fellas, because this is, this is a hard thing. And I'm, and I'm speaking from my experience as a police officer, a retired police officer. All right. I've dealt with domestic violence situations. I've, 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 I've come across women who've been battered and bruised and beat. And I've come across fellas. I've come across grown men who've been in marriages and relationships where they're women are just, just, just laying down the law and they're laying hands and it ain't in the holy way. Right. And for the man, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. But once again, hard, difficult. These words do not equate to impossible. So it might be a shock to your system. It might be a shock to your pride. It, it, first of all, it should be a shock to your pride that your woman will put hands on you in the first place. That's got to hurt. I understand it. Fortunately, never really had it. Never had it happen. Never had a woman, other than my mother, unaffectionately put her hands on me. And then even when I got those spankings, there was some affection somewhere in there. Right. But I've never been in the Well, I can't say never. I did have one ex-girlfriend when I broke up with her. She wanted to get a little free with the knees, but I had some training. So I was able to block that done with that situation. Right. That was that was almost 20 something years ago, 25. No, damn near 30 years ago. All right. So my point to you is this. You can't wait until you hit your 212 point to want to do something positive or constructive, productive. Because once you hit that 212 point, everything that's been bottled up, everything that you've been holding in, when you finally release that, chances are, because you're boiling, 212, 209, you're still very mad, 210, you're still very mad, 211, you're angry. 212, too late. 212, too late. So if you find yourself in a relationship where the other person, again, this is for everybody, but I want to touch this. I want, I, want to, I want to put this out there to the fellas because when my friend hit his 212 point, 212, too late. 212, too late. I want to keep saying that so that it sticks in your head. 212, too late. Remember, 212 degrees is the temperature at which water boils. Not sooner. No degree sooner. 
No degree lesser than 212. So your 212 point is, is when you are about to explode. 212, too late. So, fellas, again, if, if, if you're in a relationship and your woman is putting her hands on you, if she's putting her hands on you, you need to report it. If that means she got to go, then that means she got to go. And, yeah, family will, family will get on your case about it. Your kids might feel some kind of way about it, but they don't have to live with your circumstances. Reminds me of, of, of something that Mark Cuban once said on Shark Tank. Never take advice from somebody who doesn't have to live with the consequences of those actions, of their advice, right? So you cannot listen to me, but I'm telling you from real time, real life experience, I mean, sitting there watching him, I sat there, I, I, I was at almost every day of his trial, and I was there today for the sentencing. Sentencing. And it, it's, it, it wasn't a good feeling. It, there were tears in the room, obviously, because his, his wife's family was there and they were angry as, you know, they, they had every right to be, you know. But here's the thing. When you reach your 212 point and you act out and you do things or you say things that are irreparable, irreversible, guess what? Whatever justification you thought you had once you've done those things that can't be undone, that can't be taken back, that can't be reversed, you're no longer the victim. You just made the person who was making your life miserable the victim. Right now, I wasn't in my friend's, you know, bedroom life on a daily basis. I don't know all the ins and outs of what was going on, but I've known this man's almost 40 years, almost 40 years. And and he has been a friend to me like no other, like no other. So it pains me to know that as of today. My best friend, unless he wins his appeal, good luck with that. But unless he wins his appeal, he will live out the rest of his natural life in a state prison. 212, too late. 212, too late. He reached his 212 point. And here's the thing. He he did talk to me. He did tell me when they were having problems. He did tell me that he was filing for divorce. He should have talked to somebody sooner. So, fellas, we got to swallow our pride when you find... I can't say we because, fortunately, by the grace of God, I'm not in that type of relationship with my wife. And this has been uh, uh, an eye-opening a uh, learning experience, teachable moment for me in my life and my marriage. Because nobody has the perfect marriage. Every marriage has ups and downs, twists and turns, bumps and bruises, peaks and valleys. Every marriage. Any, anybody that tells you different, they're lying. Now, all that being said, I just want you all, but again, fellas in particular, when you find yourself in this situation, get out. Go get help. There, there are people, there, there are organizations. Uh, I, I know, like in the town that I live in, there's a whole domestic violence squad that consists of uh, women volunteers. I don't know if they have any males in, 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 in that group, but they, they're, they're women I, I never saw a dude when I was working. I never saw a dude come in. But it's, it's, so it's always been women to come in, you know, and they do all the, you know, the, the restraining order paperwork and all that stuff. Listen, whatever embarrassment you might feel, whatever, whatever, whatever um, lack of pride you might feel so you got you 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 you're in this situation that you can't get yourself out of so you think you, you your pride is shattered so you build it up you you create this fake it till you make it sense of pride and continue dealing with what's going on hoping that it's going to stop yet this is the definition of insanity 
doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. Your man or your woman puts their hand on you and they say sorry and you believe them. And then another couple days later, another couple weeks later, another couple months later, could be another couple years later. Don't matter. They put their hands on you again. And they say sorry. And you forgive them. And you do nothing about it. And then some period of time later. Do you understand where I'm going with this? Staying with someone in a relationship and that and, and having that person abuse you. And, 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 and it's not just physical. Staying with somebody who abuses you physically, emotionally, verbally. Get the hell away from them. Sometimes God, the universe, whoever you deem your high power to be, let's call it the creator, whatever, I don't care. But sometimes that higher power puts people in our lives to show us exactly who we don't want and why. Right. So so you have to see the signs for what they are. When you encounter a relationship and you experience something, when you're involved in a relationship and you encounter or experience something that you know you don't want as a part of your life's experience, as a part of your life's journey, you have to get out the car. You have to get off that road. You have to find a new road. And that's not going to be easy. No, I'm telling you flat out, it's not going to be easy. So I don't want to hear, well, that's easier said than done. I know this. And yet and still, I'm telling you to do it anyway. I'm telling you to do this so you don't find your 212 point. I'm telling you to do this so that you don't blow up and boil over. I'm telling you to do this so that you don't make the mistake of of taking away your children's parents, plural. Because... Not only will his son and daughter, my friend, not only will his son and daughter never see their mother again, they'll never see him again. And these children are in the custody of their grandmother. And and I won't say anything about that woman other than this. As long as those children are under her parentage, or parenting, those children will never, never know what it's like to love their father the way they did prior to this unfortunate incident. But people don't think about this at the 212 point. When you hit the 212 point, you ain't think about nobody but yourself. When you hit the 212 point, don't nobody else in the world matter to you. When you hit your 212 point, When you at that point where you are boiling red, you are seeing nothing but red. You are not thinking straight. Only thing that matters is you. And how you can resolve or rectify that situation as best as you. I don't even want to use the word think as best as you feel in that moment. But you're not operating on logic. You're not thinking about the consequences. You're not thinking. You're feeling. Now, when you act on positive emotion, you get positive outcomes. When you act on negative emotions, you get negative outcomes. 212, too late. 212, too late. Now, hold up. I don't want to, like I said, this wasn't going to be a, a, a high note episode. I said that. But I also said... We are going to end on a, on a high note. We are going to end this year on a high note. Listen, boys and girls, I just want the best for you. And, and, and guess what? Sometimes in order to get to the best, you got to go through some mess. It's unfortunate, but that's just how the calculus of life works. Sometimes... To to paraphrase uh, uh, something I heard a comedian say, (laughs) sometimes life can be harder than Chinese arithmetic. Hard does not equal difficult. You are going through something, but you gotta go through something to get through something. Find the people and you get somebody in your life who loves you. And guess what? If you can't find anybody who loves you, find somebody who at least likes you. And if you can't find somebody who at least likes you, well then 
beleza ou sem Vai, 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 vai Let's have a stranger Let's have a friend you haven't met yet So then find a new friend Make a new friend But find somebody to help you cool down Find somebody that will help you uh, uh, take out Purge, unleash In a positive and constructive manner So that you don't reach that 212 point Listen, this is Harold S. Reed Jr., also known as HRJR, your motive action coach. You'll know what motive action means. Motive plus action equals success. I want what's best for you. I wish you all happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa when it comes. Whatever you're doing this time of year, whatever you're doing every day to live a better life.